Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. Since we did our Antec C8 video, one of the most requested things we've seen in the comments is, what about the Antec C3? Well, ladies and gents, here it is, the smaller brother to the C8, the brand new Antec C3, comes in at around about 190 US dollars with four included fans. So what we're gonna do is our usual thing today. We're gonna pull it all apart, we're gonna do a build, test the thermals, and see what makes this tick. But before that, Here's a word from today's video sponsor. It's your mum. No, it's actually me. Oh, it is you. Okay, no. take it away, Claire, I suppose. This video is brought to you by VIPSCDKey.com. Have you ever installed Windows 11 only to see the watermark of death? You don't need to fork out a couple of hundred dollars for a key. You can grab one from today's video sponsor from VIPSCDKey.com for a tenth of the price. You can use our code GEAR to get 30% off for this month only. How good is that? That takes that already cheap Windows 11 key and makes it even cheaper. It's easy as placing your order. Bingo bango. You've got your new key on your orders page. You chuck that key into the activation screen and you're good to go. No more watermark of death. Use code gear to get 30% off for this month only. Link in the description. On with the video, back to you, Nick. Let's start off with panel removal. There's two thumb screws on the rear of the case for the TG side panel remove those thumb screws, and then the panel kind of slides back and then you can lift it away from the case. Rear panel's the same deal, two removable thumb screws, loosen those thumb screws, and then slide the panel back from the case. Lastly, the TG front panel can be easily removed. There's no screws, basically just pull it away from the front like you would a regular front panel. All right, ladies and gents, the new test that we do with all these fish tanks is the flex test, and this one may surprise you. I'm pulling down on that pretty hard, and there's more flex in the twist of the chassis than there is when I'm pulling down. So yeah, Antec's done a pretty great job on this yet again. This is the second Antec fish tank in a row that we've seen with really rigid build quality. It's uh, astounding how strong that looks because to be honest, the rest of the materials of the case are at first glance look like Antec's more budget focused cases, but the build quality is really good from what I can tell. I'm putting a lot of weight on that. There's a couple of dust filters on the case. There's one on the rear side panel and it's magnetic. There's also another dust filter on the top of the case. Then there's two more dust filters on the bottom of the case, one at the front, this one is magnetic, and the one at the back kind of clips into place for the power supply. The reason why this dust filter here will be a bit more obvious a bit later in the video, but essentially there's an intake here if you wanted to install a fan at the bottom as well. Full power supply support, the maximum length in the C3 is 195 millimeters, and that is including all of the cables plugged into your PSU. And the reason for this is because of the design of the PSU shroud, it doesn't run the whole length of the case and that's by design. You've got these two 2.5 inch sleds on the back of the motherboard tray. They have some captive thumb screws to remove the sleds to install the drives. So that's two drives there so far. In this little compartment here is this removable section of the case. Inside of it, you can do a 3.5 inch spinning rush drive on the installed sled as well as a 2.5 inch SSD if you want. So three drives in total. There's three pre-installed fans in the C3. We've got these three side intake fans. These are reverse pitch fan blades, so they will pull air in from the backside and through the case, as well as a fan on the rear for exhaust. These are all PWM fans and they're all addressable RGB because there is an included RGB fan hub in the case as well. As for the fan and radiator support, at the top here, we can do up to a 360 mil radiator. You can do a 280, a 240, three 120 mil fans. Although it supports three fans, you can't do a 360 mil radiator. You can only do a 240 mil radiator. However, be aware though, if you're doing that, you're reducing the maximum GPU length because if it stands out too far, you physically won't be able to plug in your GPU at all. So yeah. Just keep that in mind, it is something to be aware of. If you remove that hard drive enclosure, there's also another 120 mil fan mount on the bottom. Lastly, there is space for another 120 mil fan at the back. As you can see by this pre-installed 120 mil fan. As for motherboard support, 
the C3 supports up to ATX motherboards all the way up from ITX. So I wouldn't recommend trying to do EATX in this case. A couple reasons. Well, main reason is if you've got any fans here, you're not going to be able to put the motherboard in. However, there is something I noticed. If you decide to not have fans here, you could technically make the motherboard hang over here and pass all your cables through here. But yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. Get a different case if you're using EATX because EATX isn't real anyway like Australia. Maximum air cooler height in the C3 is very conservative here with a maximum height of 160 millimeters. The thing with that is there are quite a few coolers that are high performance that are inside of that size anyway. So not much to worry about there. Stuff like any of the Scythe Mugen coolers like the new Mugen 6 will fit in here without any problems whatsoever. For GPU support, you're looking at around 415 mils max. Also, as mentioned, if you're putting in a side radiator, you do need to be aware that you're going to reduce that to whatever the maximum length of the motherboard tray is. I don't know that number from the top of my head, but something that I wanted to mention as well that I thought was a little bit strange with this case, given the design, is vertical GPU brackets don't actually work in here at all because the PCIe cutout on the back here they have the cross members and the cross beam. So all the support to hold that all together is there. I honestly wish that Antec didn't do that because this case with the vertical GPU bracket would look stunning. And I do have a really nice Antec vertical GPU bracket, but it just won't work in here. It's a little bit sad. For the front panel wiring, we've got our regular lights and switches and everything to turn your system on. That's pretty normal. We've got USB 3.2 Gen 2. We've got USB 3.2 Type A and front panel audio. We've got a power button. There's an RGB button so you can control the RGB controller, a drive activity light, a power light, a combined headphone and microphone jack, USB 3.2 Type A port and a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type C port. There is an included PWM fan and RGB hub here. So it's got the front panel control on the top of the case so you can control all the lighting effects. There's no fan control on that panel. You'll have to use your motherboard pass through to control that. But there are six PWM fan connections and six addressable RGB connections as well. But it doesn't stop there with the RGB in this case. There's also this little panel here on the PSU shroud, and this is an RGB accent panel. So you can add a little bit of pop to the PSU shroud. All right, I thought I'd give you guys a little bit of a demo of the RGB effects in the controller on the C3. Now, Antec typically has pretty nice RGB with their controllers. So obviously we've got unicorn spew, we've got a whole bunch of staggered lighting effects. This is all pretty standard stuff you're gonna find on most RGB controllers from every manufacturer. But you know, it is nice to have this in the case so you don't have to muck around in any lighting software. Sometimes to be honest, this is what I prefer to do because I just press a button and all of the lighting is set. I mean, obviously there's things like RGB RAM and on your graphics card and whatnot, but this here is you know pretty nice. Now with most Antec controllers, the other thing is if you hold down the LED button, it switches it to motherboard pass-through mode. And obviously because there's no motherboard in this case, it's not gonna show any lighting, but yeah, you do have the option for that as well. You'll also notice that because there's no PWM plugged into the fan hub either, the fans are running at their maximum speed and they can be a little bit loud, but actually, not terrible. I'll just put myself a bit closer so you can get an idea of the volume. But yeah, really not that loud. The included RGB controller has a three pin five volt addressable RGB connector. That's for motherboard pass through. There's a PWM connector so you can control all the fan speed from your motherboard and a SATA power connector so you can power the whole thing. That's everything I think you need to know about the Antec C3 for now. Some interesting stuff with the flex test. I didn't think it was gonna be that rigid if I'm being honest. But yeah, let's do a build. We'll test the thermals and then see if it's worth 109 US dollars. Let's do a build thing. I'm actually still here. I don't know why I picked up the case. It's really light, so. You didn't even get out of frame. I know, it's like, ugh. <laughs> Idiot.
here's the thermals. What you're seeing on your screen right now is the CPU thermals are pretty average if I'm being honest. They're definitely not the best thermals we've seen for the 7700X, but this is one of those CPUs that depending on the sample can be a little bit hit and miss. And the reason why I'm saying this is I had another 7700X that I was testing the other day. One that was, wasn't on the channel at all, just one that I had. And I'm like, the idle temperature for that chip is higher. And the deltas were just so different between these two chips. It was just odd. But yeah, this is what I'm trying to say is that the thermals here are okay. Like they're manageable. And in this case, the airflow is fine. As for GPU thermals, the thermals here are actually quite good. I gotta say with the 7900GRE, we've noticed that the thermal performance for a bunch of these that we've played around with have been really, really good. So if you're interested in any of the hardware used in this PC, there's a PC part picker list down below, but I also put little cards in the corners and around the place when I'm doing the build so you can figure out what all the hardware is. But yeah, if you really wanna know PC part picker list and if I haven't put it there yet, it's coming soon. It's just something that I do here. Okay, right. And Tech C3, what do I think? Well, the build quality is okay. It's definitely not the top tier of Antec cases, but again, we'll, we'll talk about the price a little bit later and all that stuff, but I think it's actually pretty adequate. There are a couple of things that I think are a little bit weird about the C3. First of all, top radiator clearance is very tight. And this is something we saw with their Flux series. And I think they might be using some of the same tooling between these cases. And what I mean by top radiator placement is, depending on the EPS cables you're using, it's gonna be quite tight. And the reason why I have the tubes at the front of the case and not at the back was because of clearance with this cooler. And it's just a bit weird because it's an Antec cooler, but the only other thing that they could have improved on with this case, and I just think is a little bit of a missed opportunity because of the type of case is the vertical GPU support. I don't know why they didn't just support it. Considering Antec's been really good with supporting vertical GPUs for the longest time. And yeah, this one just seems like a tiny bit of an oversight, but it's nothing you can't fix without some tin snips or a Dremel. So, you know, you can do it, but you'll just be mutilating your own case. But other than those two things, I actually think the C3 isn't a bad case. When I pulled it out of the box, I wasn't sure about the build quality because, you know, some cheaper cases can be like that. But the second I did the flex test, it completely changed my thoughts on it because it shows that they've put time and effort into making the case very, very rigid. And that's the main thing, right? It might not be something that affects you, but it can be something that is impacted when shipping, right? So that's also something to be aware of. One of the good things about this case is the way they did the front panel. This looks like it's a dual chamber case, right? But in essence, it's just a regular case with a PSU in the bottom. But with the front panel, instead of you having to unscrew it, like a lot of these dual chamber cases, the panel just pops out. And I like that with these type of cases because it can get annoying when you have two little screws you have to pull out and then you have to like jiggle it out and maneuver it. Corsair, I'm looking at you. There's a video about that. Go check it out, link in the description. But the case is fine, right? It's good. And I think the value proposition for this case is there as well. I think Antec's done a pretty good job with the C3 and I think the price reflects that as well. If you're interested in the Antec C3, they're going for around about 109 US dollars or around about 139 Aussie dollars at the time of filming this video and it comes with four PWM fans. Now these fans are actually not bad, they're not too loud either. One thing I will mention is you need to set your motherboard to PWM because they'll just run at 100% otherwise. With this MSI board, they do a weird thing where MSI is like, hey, let's set all of the fan headers to DC mode. It just pumps fans like these as hard as they can go. And it's not an accurate representation of how loud they are. L listen, like you can't hear it now, it's dead quiet. And that's not because I made them quiet, it's, I quite literally just changed them from DC to PWM and they're still running at 1100 RPM. They are dead silent. Not only that, $109 for a case with four included fans with RGB and the controller 
is pretty good value. You'll find other cases on the market that will have three or four fans, but a lot of them don't have any way to control them. They're basically just a splitter that plugs into your motherboard and Bob's your uncle's brother's cousin's auntie, and you're done. But this isn't the case with the C3. It has a lot of different RGB options that we showed earlier in the video. And yeah, I think Antec did a pretty good job with it. Antec has been absolutely killing it with all of their cases over the last, I'm gonna say two years, and I hope they continue to do it, but we'll find out more about that when we head off to Computex this year and check out what Antec has to offer. I'm very, very excited to see what they've got. In fact, I'm very excited to see what everyone's got this year. It's gonna be a big one, I think. I'm, I'm very, very keen. Anyways, guys, if you like the music you heard here, I make all the music. It's available by clicking that join button right down there, down below. And if you wanna get early access to videos like this one, you can head on over to Floatplan. There's also a link in the description to that. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peek, we seeking. Here's the cat. You guys love Bindi. Here she is. Doing, doing Bindi things. Bindi, you're in the garden today. Doing some gardening. Oh, that's cute. Don't let mum see you do that because if you bite the plant, mum get angry. Don't bite your mum's plants. Bindi, don't bite your mum's plants. Don't bite them. Don't bite them. <laughs> don't bite him, Binny. No. No, Binny, no. Don't do it. No, Binny, don't do it. <laughs> Binny egg. Bindi. Binge. What are you doing? You're no fun today. She just saw a bug. See you, Binny.